So Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel and in the lesson today, or in this video, I'm going to be answering question uh, from the end of the presentation, test your understanding of chapter 6.3, integration by substitution. And in this question here, um, we have to use substitution, the substitution given, which is x equals 2 times tan theta, to integrate this expression between the values of 0 and 2 um, with respect to x. So 8 over 4 plus x squared, all squared with respect to x, but we have to use this substitution. So when we use integration by substitution, we introduce a third kind of, of or you can say another kind of, uh, variable into it. So here we have to in, in, integrate this with respect to x, and we consider the function that we are integrating as y. So y is equal to 8 over 4 plus x squared squared. That's what y is. And we want to use the substitution x equals 2 tan theta in order to integrate this. So our objective is to find the integral of y with respect to x between the limits given. I'll call them x1 and x2 for now. So x1 is 2 and x2 is 0 here. And in order to do this using substitution, introducing this other um, variable, which is theta, what we do is we say this is going to be the same as integrating y dx d theta d theta. You can think of it like almost the d thetas cancel out. You're left with y dx. So this will give you the same as this as long as now we use the limits not in terms of x, but in terms of theta. All of this has to be expressed in terms of theta, including the limits. So I'll call this theta 1, and I'll call this theta 2. So if we can rewrite this in this form, where we write y, but in terms of theta, we find dx d theta in terms of theta, and we find the limits in terms of theta. If we can integrate that, then we can uh, solve this problem. So what we're going to do now is we're going to First of all, I'm going to find what dx d theta is. So if x is 2 tan theta, if you differentiate uh, 2 tan theta with respect to theta, you end up with 2 times secant squared theta. Okay, so that's the differential of tan theta is secant squared theta. That's one of the standard results that we should know. So that's dx d theta. So I can replace dx d theta with 2 secant squared theta. And y, well, I can replace the x here with 2 tan theta. So what I'll do is just write down the way it is now. So let me write down how, th how things are at the moment. So I'm going to have basically the integral of, I'll write it as in terms of x for, for now, just to make it clear, 4 plus x squared and then squared. Okay, I'm going to write this down times dx d theta. Okay, I'll write it as this for now, dx d theta, d theta. And I have my limits between theta 1 and theta 2. Okay, now, so well, I can also find what theta 1 and theta 2 are as well. I know that um, x equals 2 tan theta. That means um, theta is equal to inverse tan of x over 2. Because I divide both sides by 2. I have tan theta equals x over 2. So theta will be inverse tan of x over 2. So when x is equal to... Um, Let's say x1 is going to be 2, x1 is 2, so x, when x is equal to 2, theta is going to be inverse tan of 2 over 2, which is 1, which gives you, in radians, we must use radians when we're doing integration and differentiation, it's pi over 4 radians. And when x equals 0, then theta equals inverse tan of 0 over 2, which is 0, and the inverse tan of 0 is 0. Okay, so I know my limits are going to be 0 and 1. So this is going to be uh, 1 here, sorry, pi over 4, not 1, pi over 4 and 0. And we have 8 over. Now I can replace the x, okay, as we know, with 2 tan theta. That's our substitution. So I'm going to replace the x in here with 2 tan theta. So I have 4 plus, and this is going to be 2 tan theta, and that has to be squared. And then the whole thing is also squared. 4 plus x squared, then all squared. Times dx d theta, which we worked out was 2 secant squared theta. Okay, and d theta. 
All right, so if I can now, now I've got everything in terms of theta, including the limits, and now I have to try to simplify this and, and find the solution to this. So now, first of all, I'm going to try to sort this, this bit out in here. Okay, now I know that 2 tan theta all squared is 4 tan squared theta. So I'm going to first, this is from 0 to pi over 4, you have 8 times 2 secant squared theta. Let me just multiply that as well. That's 8 times 2 secant squared theta. That's 16 times secant squared theta over, and this is going to be, <clears throat> I'll just um, deal with this first. That's going to be 4 plus 4 tan squared theta, and that has to be squared, and integrate that with respect to theta. Now, this I can take out 4 as common from these two terms. So I have 16 times secant squared theta over. Now, if I take out 4 as common from these two terms, I'll have 4 times, and, that, and then I've got 1 plus tan squared theta, and all of this is squared, including that 4, right? Because this whole thing is squared. Now, and this is integrated with respect to theta between the limits of pi over 4 and 0. Now, 1 plus tan squared theta is e equal to secant squared theta from the identities that we should know. And we know we should all know sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. And from this, we can derive all the other identities, the reciprocal tree identities. We can, we can if so, for example, if I divide this by sine squared theta, I'm going to have 1 plus... Um, sorry, if I divide it by cosine squared theta, that's why I'm looking for tan, I'm looking for something with tan squared theta, divided by cosine squared theta, I have tan squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. That will give me tan squared theta plus 1, tan squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. So this tan squared theta plus 1 in this bracket can be replaced with secant squared theta. So let's just continue here. We've got limits between 0 and pi over 4. On top, I've got 16 times secant squared theta. Now, this 4 is going to be squared, so that's 16. And this becomes secant squared theta, which is then squared. So we're going to get secant squared theta squared, which is secant to the power 4 theta. All right? So the 16 cancels out with the 16. So I'm left with something that looks like this. I've got secant squared theta over secant to the power of 4 theta d theta. All right, so I'm almost there now because this is basically, they cancel out, you're left with 1 over secant to the power of four, 2 theta. So you have 0 pi over 4, 1 over secant squared theta d theta, and we know that secant squared theta is the same as 1 over secant squared theta is the same as cosine squared theta. This is the reciprocal of the cosine. Um, function. So I'm left with finding the integral of cosine squared theta with respect to theta, and that's one of the integrals that we should know how to use from, or how to find in P3, we learn how to integrate something like this. Now we cannot integrate this directly uh, because it's not, you know, you can't use the reverse of the chain rule, but what we can do is we can use identities to, uh, you know, sort this out, to integrate this, because I can express cosine squared theta in, in, in terms of cosine 2 theta using the double angle formula, which is cosine 2 theta equals 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, which we should know how to form this identity. If you forget how to do it, you can use the formula sheet for cosine a plus b. Okay, so I'll just quickly show you that. Cosine a plus b, as we know, is cosine, cosine a times cosine b, which is cosine squared a, minus sine a times sine b, which is sine squared, uh, sorry, cosine squared, sorry, let me just do that again. Cosine a times cosine a plus b, sorry, is cosine a times cosine b, minus sine a times sine b. So if we have cosine 2 theta, that's cosine theta plus theta, that would be cosine squared theta, cosine theta times cosine theta, minus sine theta times sine theta, sine squared theta. So we can say cosine 2 theta, therefore, can be expressed, if you want it, in terms of cosine squared theta. I can replace the sine squared theta with 1 minus 
cosine squared theta. So we have cosine squared theta minus 1 minus cosine squared theta. And that will give us, that will give us um, cosine squared theta minus minus cosine squared theta, which is 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. So that's cosine 2 theta in terms of cosine squared theta now. And if I want to integrate this, I can make cosine squared theta the subject. So I have cosine 2 theta plus 1 divided by 2 equals cosine squared theta. So I can take this between 0 and pi over 4, and I can replace this with, I can take out the half, and inside I'll have cosine 2 theta plus 1 integrated with respect to theta. Cosine squared theta is a half times cosine 2 theta plus 1. Okay, if it was sine squared theta I was integrating, then I would express this as, and from this stage I could write this as 1 minus sine squared theta minus another sine squared theta. It would be 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And then I can make the sine squared theta the subject, in which case I'll get, uh, you know, something similar to this, but you'll have an opposite sign between them. So now what I can do is integrate this. I know how to integrate cosine 2 theta. I don't know how to integrate cosine squared theta. Cosine squared theta is integrated by rewriting in terms of cosine 2 theta. And I know how to integrate 1. So I've got to integrate with respect to theta. So I'm going to have my half. I'm going to start integrating now. So I'm going to write this as a square bracket. The integral of cosine 2 theta is sine 2 theta. And then divided by the differential what's inside the function, which is 2. And the, the integral of 1 is theta. And I have my limits pi over 4 and 0. So now all that's left for me to do is to substitute these values in here. So I have a half, and I have here, this is going to be um, sine of pi over 2, 2 times, I'll just write it down, sine of 2 times pi over 4 is pi over 2, divided by 2, plus pi over 4. Okay, there's that minus, then I'm going to put, um, pi over, I'm going to put 0 in here, so that will be sine of 0, because sine of 2, two that sine of 0 is 0, and of course that's 0, so this whole thing is going to become 0. Right? You must be careful when you put 0 into something, because sometimes it doesn't become 0. If this was a cosine here, it wouldn't be 0. It wouldn't be 0, because cosine of 0 is 1. So don't assume that if there's a 0 here, the whole of that second bracket is going to become 0. It doesn't always work out like that. In this case, it does. All right, so now we have a half times, and we got sine of pi over 2, which is 1. Okay, so 1 over 2, that's going to be a half, plus pi over 4. So my answer is a quarter plus pi over 8. There's the final answer for this question. Um, I'm a bit run out of space there, but that's the answer for this question. A quarter plus pi over 8, you can express it as one fraction if you want to. You can leave it like this, it doesn't specify. So that's the answer to this question. Right, so when we use integration by parts with the substitution they gave us, everything broke down to the integral basically of cosine squared theta, which is one of those integrals that you need the double angle formula to um, integrate. Now, how can we check in an exam that we are correct? We have a quarter plus pi over 8. So the fi final answer is a quarter plus pi over 8. How can I check that we're correct? Well, what we can do is we can take our calculator, okay, and we can use the calculator and sub just write, type in exactly what we see here into our calculator using the function in our calculator, this integral button here, okay, then this is numerical integ integration, and we just type in exactly what we see here. So I'll put my fraction, I'll put 8, I'll put over, and I'll put bracket, 4 plus, then I'll use this x here, x squared. I'll close the bracket, and then I'll square that again. The whole bracket is squared. That's this function, and I'm going to put in the values in terms of x, 0, and 2. And that gives me this answer, 0 0.642. Okay, 0 0.642996999. Okay, so that's the answer to this. 
Now, our answer was this, which is a quarter plus pi over 8. So let's just see what a quarter plus pi over 8 gives us. So 1 over 4 plus pi over 8. Okay, let's see what value this gives us. It gives us exactly the same value. If I go back to the last screen, the integral of this is exactly that. It doesn't give us this in exact form. All right, we have to give it an exact form because it says um, exact values of. So it, this doesn't give us the answer in exact form, the calculator, but we can check our answer by checking what our exact form is as a decimal, and they're exactly the same. All right, so we know for sure that we're right. So we know sometimes you can make a mistake, especially like in the last stage here, when you are um, you know, putting in values, you might make a mistake and your answer might be wrong. So you can always check to see if you've made a silly mistake by doing that. Okay, so that's how you can um, deal with this question. I hope that was clear. Thank you for watching and see you soon.